Welcome back to Two Girls, One Bog. The podcast that is better when you're stoned, but it's oh fucking K if you're not. My name is Mac Dizzle. And I'm Joya. Let's dive on in. Dive on in. Ah. It's getting better. It's getting better. (laughs) Uh, How you doing? I am good you can see i have my christmas tree up she's <gasps> i didn't see small. it until you said something well it's she's so pink cute. so she blends yes she blends right in oh, um, she's super cute yes thank you thank you thank you're welcome what, what what has happened since the last time we recorded anything thanksgiving well, already happened right yeah i think so should i talk about how bad the food was at my first thanksgiving no okay so i'm just gonna dive you into this this okay. is like the first like meal with extended family that I'm bringing Rajul to. Like he's come to like birthdays and stuff, but nothing where anyone like really like cooked. Mm-hmm. And so we're there and um, my aunt made boxed potatoes Ugh. from a box. The gravy was from a can. The turkey was deep fried and somehow dry. It was the oh. worst Thanksgiving meal I've ever had in my entire life. Okay. It literally like you put the, the, the gravy on the potatoes. It tasted like you were eating like chicken noodle soup. It was like gross. nasty. They didn't even add good. anything to the canned gravy. No. They just put it in a pot and heated it up. Yep. They put it in a nice little ladle after like a nice little pouring container after to trick us. But no, it was canned like a gravy. serving. Yeah. Fuckers. I don't understand why out of all days of the year, you would choose Thanksgiving to make boxed potatoes and canned gravy. But that's like her thing. She doesn't potatoes? make potatoes. Oh. She's not a very good cook as it is. And then so, why host Thanksgiving? That's what I'm like. Don't volunteer for the potatoes. I've never made mashed potatoes in my life and I'll fucking do it. Okay. Oh my God. It's like the easiest fucking thing ever. It's just work. It's just tedious to peel the potatoes, do all that. It's just annoying. That's all. But oh my God. Yeah. So that happened. But thankfully my mom had a, a turkey at her house. And so we had Thanksgiving round two. Oh, like was that already later. the plan? No. Yeah. So that was already the plan. It just worked out really well. Because the first thing I didn't take any <laughs> leftovers with me. I didn't take no. a single leftover. I said, no, you guys can keep that. Um, my mom, when she threw down on Thanksgiving, I took back a container like this big. Yeah, there you go. That's a how it's supposed container. to be. That's how you're supposed Literally. to be leaving Thanksgiving. Like, like let me upset have it with as... yourself and overflowing. Yes. And <laughs> as ready to take as much leftovers as you're allowed Yes, to take. Yes. Wow. That is fucking hilarious. Yeah. So it was fucking disgusting. And I felt really embarrassed that that was the first like introduction to my extended family at cooking. least it, yeah it's your extended but like family, the good news so. is, is he's had like plenty of meals that my mom has cooked and my mom's like a good cook so right so he knows it's not gonna be like that all yeah he knows it's not genetic the, the apple doesn't fall yeah. there okay <laughs> <laughs> that's a broke distant that generational family tree curse. yeah <laughs> generational curse is being broken here okay <laughs> that's okay. funny i did want to ask you about okay a couple weeks ago you posted on your story somebody was like if only we would have known what would have the terror that would have ensued from the edibles when you were drinking that edible syrup did what not, happened did i not tell you no oh my god so that's and weird. i've been waiting for the podcast to ask you because i knew it was going to be either <sighs> yeah. horrifying or hilarious or something well i uh, got a little too big for my britches the other day and uh, on an empty stomach, mind you, no food in my Mac belly. Dizzle. I said, let's do an edible mukbang. Mm, yum. <laughs> and all I got were candies and chocolates. Okay. Also <laughs> secondary. I had a hot chocolate, chocolate bar, chocolate caramel things, a candy thing that goes under your tongue and gummies. Like oh all God. sweet candy. Just fucking dish gushing. Dish gushing. Yeah. Um, I saw your face after you took one little... I <laughs> it's so You're bad like, it's just disgusting. syrup in general just doesn't taste good yeah but the chocolate one was just so like overpowering sweet i feel like too with chocolate and weed like chocolate is such a specific taste, taste yeah. i feel like i it's so 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 fucking hard for me to find a chocolate that has weed in it that you like the the Kiva coffee disgusting. beans i, I think it's because the love coffee beans Kiva. Those are so good. If you've never tried them and you're listening right now, yeah. Kiva has these little chocolate covered coffee beans that are so fucking good. Try yeah. them. And they're only five milligrams each. 
So I, I think. So <laughs> you ate all those edibles. So all I ate no no no, no 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 no. I plan to. I plan to. But instead, I started with the hot chocolate. I said, the hot chocolate's going to be rough. I'm going to get through this first, okay? <laughs> yeah. I poured 500 milligrams in a cup. Uh, and I chugged that bitch. I took a couple sips, and I was like, this is horrible. I just, I'm just i going to have to get through this. And I chugged it. And I sat there for like 10 minutes just regretting my decision. And then I went and threw up a little bit. Not a lot. Just a little just bit. Just a little but then I came back and I literally had to stop. Like I was on a live stream while I was doing this and recording a YouTube video. So I was like doing like both at once. Mm-hmm. And I had to stop recording the YouTube video for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes just to recover. And the stream was just like, are you okay, Mac? Oh <laughs> I had to recover. Find... Recover from the taste? From the fucking, from the... I was n- nauseated. Na- oh. Nauseated because I had an empty oh. stomach with sugar and THC just percolating in there <laughs> with like a little just stew. In there. the little molecules are just in there beating your fucking stomach <laughs> fuck you bitch oh my god yeah oh my yeah. god so i um i overdid it that day and it just made me feel very very sick for a long time yeah and then i started to feel very very high oh yeah because the the liquid stuff i feel like gets absorbed quicker i like it hits mm, me quicker i could definitely see that being a thing so, oh my god so you didn't get to the other ones then you only i ate the hot some chocolate? after that that's what's even crazier joya after i threw up and i i found a little taco bell burrito in my house and i ate that i said let's dive on in <laughs> and I fucking that's a like very another... mac dizzle thing too yeah. though it took like another 40 50 milligrams after that <laughs> for, oh. for no reason <laughs> my fucking god oh my god how how were you so was that that was in the morning wasn't it you took it yeah so that happened in like the a.m ish and i had a live stream planned with sasha at oh this was that day 7 p.m eastern yeah it was like 4 p.m my time 7 p.m her time we were playing mario kart yeah and mind you after i filmed so i filmed this mukbang and then i filmed a video after that and then i went and took a little nappy on but in the midst of my nappy on you know how when you wake up from like an edible nap you just want to like eat something mm-hmm absolutely yeah like just anything that's close you're like all, i don't want to move i just want all this. your munchies are <laughs> brewing while you're sleeping and then when you wake up they're like you're like oh yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> like ready for food <laughs> and the only thing by my bed was the little caramel edibles the little salted caramel oh my edibles. god Shh, the so i up. ate the whole thing oh my god and i got like and I and I, I looked at the clock and I had like 10 minutes until I had to get on this stream with Sasha. And so I'm on the stream with Sasha for like 10 minutes, holding it down, doing great things. Um, and then we do our first race. And the spinning, I was, just the, the movement of the carts, I was- Just watching it on TV. Just sent, sent. I was so dizzy, re-nauseated. Everything that I had bought, battled and escaped was back. And I kept oh going for like God. another 45 minutes, just trying to hold it together. And I finally was like, I, I can't do it. And it's oh. so funny because people were watching both of our streams at the same time. Sasha did like this cute little link. And so Sasha was like, hey guys, so my new merch is here. Everything's fun. Ha, 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 ha. I'm Sasha. Me. Yeah. And, I was, yeah. and I was just like. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh my yeah. God. Two oh my levels. god i knew there had to have been something yes. it was a traumatizing day and i'm hot chocolate i can't even it's a triggering word for me now somebody did like a little hot chocolate emote in my stream the other day and i was like oh yes. <laughs> no! triggered oh my god dude yes that is fucking hilarious but fucking in triggering. true mac dizzle fashion oh, you oh. fucking i got can't back believe... on the horse yes you <laughs> you took a nap you did a fucking you filmed a video you took a nap you did a stream i just that is so impressive all while on the precipice of death yeah it's amazing amazing stuff oh my god dude i oh my god i i that is just amazing i'm so proud of you so now you know what happened that day yeah thank you (laughs) i've been waiting (laughs) i can't believe i didn't tell you about that yeah it was a i mean honestly like that day it feels like i was on xanax that day 
I just oh. don't remember it very well. Like just a pow- blur. Edibles are a powerful fucking thing, bro. <laughs> they really are. That's like, it's so funny to me. We've definitely talked about this before. How like, people <laughs> who are like against smoking weed or whatever think that for their first time trying anything cannabis related, they they think an edible is a good option. I'm like, don't fucking do that. It's literally- take a hit of a fucking joint and then see how you feel. Do not this, eat an edible. Yeah. This might be bro science, but I'm pretty sure when you metabolize the THC, like when you eat it and it's metabolized, an, an additional st- like type of THC is released in your blood, which mm. which is part of the reason why it's such a heavy they like so body kind of Interesting. High. I think. I, I don't know. It could be total bro science. Um, but with that being said, we're going to take a little break and we're going to be back to talk about... We said we were going to talk about insane asylums, but you know facts in life. I'm a dirty little liar. And I didn't do my proper research this week. So we'll be back next week with Insane Asylums. This week, we're going to be talking about what? Growing up religious. Yes. If you didn't grow up religious, it must be nice. If you did, (laughs) get ready for some triggering. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be right back. And we're back. back. Mac Dizzles. Ooh, I very much enjoyed that. I, think <laughs> uh-uh. I wish you guys could. Uh, once they figure out how to share smells, <sighs> first of all, people are going to use that for the wrong reason. Second of all, um, I'm going to share everyone the smells of my weed. Yes. Oh my God. You know what? I bet you that somebody would have like two machines. You have a machine. And whoever else has a machine and they have all these little scents in this machine mm-hmm, and you can like mm-hmm. program your scent into that machine and then the other people mm. would be able to wow. if they had like you know ten Joya, this is this is our business idea nobody this is it everybody signed nobody an NDA it. right now nobody you weren't <laughs> listening shut your fucking ears bitch no um but honestly i would want it a little more simple to where like i could just like send a fart to like anybody who sent me a dick pic <gasps> oh that actually sounds like such a good idea i was like send a <laughs> fart like, like not maybe not even my own like i'd go to my brother's house and i'd be like send it, <laughs> send it to this guy <laughs> dude that reminds me when i was in target the other day there was just oh, like my dogs oh my god that's how you <laughs> you want to ruin somebody's day a dog fart oh <laughs> Oh. Sorry, but you were in Target. That's okay. I was just going to say that there was like this like kind of middle-aged woman like in her 40s or 50s who let out an absolutely massive like a <laughs> like multi-second fart. And no, it was like loud and I wasn't even close to her. I was like I don't know. <laughs> it was across 15, the street 20 feet away. <laughs> But I was like, um, I was like going in her direction and I changed my trajectory because I didn't, first of all, I didn't want to run into her fart. Second of all, I didn't want people to think her giant, huge fart was me. It was huge. It was not a regular fart. It was like, she did not give a fuck. And it was like, and I'm spitting. Just, hey! <laughs> oh my God. That was so funny. Her head, the scream. <laughs> Oh, that's not in a fight. I don't know who it was. Um, anyway, sending as farts. Long as this, yeah, sending farts. <laughs> Growing up religious, sending <laughs> farts. One and the same. Yes. <laughs> so I grew up pretty religious. I grew up actually, like, first of all, I was born in Kuwait. And I don't know who I'm alone. I'm going to talk about it. Um, My dad used to do, like, mad colonizer work. Like, big colonizer energy he used to literally spread christianity in islamic countries he was a missionary and he had a cover job his cover job was being a teacher like no lie wow no lie i actually didn't know that he had a cover job yeah so his he taught english at a university out there but his primary purpose of being out there was not to teach people english yes yes so he had like teams of people get like snatched up out of their beds in the middle of the night and like interrogated and shit like that like it was like those people in haiti right now who are still kidnapped yeah just just do like like, (laughs) i hope everyone's watching right now because you went on mute and then you went (laughs) (laughs) you know i'm yelling Uh, yes it's very clear and so Um, um, I grew up in a very interesting setting in that respect because I wasn't like allowed to talk about it ever. 
you know, because my dad could get in a lot of trouble. Right. Obviously, now my dad no longer does that colonizer ish. He's a scientist. He studies sea cucumbers. It's very different. <laughs> he had like a coming to Jesus and, and a like, very Bye, Jesus. <laughs> he has a very cool, meaningful, useful, yes, progressive job now. Trying to help third third world uh, communities. Actually, wait, can you tell us about it really quick because it's really uh, cool. Yeah. No, okay. Briefly. So he um. And he's, he's basically in the research stage of like learning how to spawn sea cucumbers. And um, there's some waters off of the, like the islands of Indonesia. And they're very, 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 very poor um, like villages. And so basically bigger picture, the premise of it is that he sells these little baby sea cucumbers to these farmers who live in the perfect climate to grow them. He teaches them how to grow them. Um, he sells them the cucumbers on a tab because they obviously don't have a lot of capital. Right. But then they grow those sea cucumbers. They sell them back to my dad to pay off their tab and get money on top of it. And now they have a crop. And there's an economy being introduced. Right. So it's it, in theory, that's how they want it to work. I don't actually know if it's going to specifically work out that way, but he's taking that's his the philanthropy idea. a different, yeah, his, his philanthropic efforts are going a different direction. Right. <laughs> um, I thought that, I think that's a really cool thing. I'm pretty sure everyone else will. Also, no, I think so. it's like, I'm like super proud to talk about one. Like my yeah. dad's dope. He did some weird stuff back in the day and that's not his fault because his dad was literally raised him that way. That's mm -hmm. the thing about raising kids religious. Mm -hmm. You don't know what kind of opportunities you're stealing from them to like really just express themselves and like learn for themselves yeah like me personally i remember having this intense anxiety breakdown when I, I moved to america and that's when i start so i had like my little christian friends and stuff in kuwait or whatever um and we would do like our little bible studies and everything like that but i was so young that like it really was just like more like me hanging out with my friends having fun when I got to Colorado, I moved to Colorado when I was like five and I stayed there until I was about eight and somewhere in that span, I think it was about seven. I remember going to Sunday school and the fear of God was put in me that day. The fear of God was put in me at Sunday school. They said that you need to ask Jesus into your heart or you're going to hell. And I didn't know what the fuck that meant, Joya. How do you ask Jesus into your heart? They didn't explain how. They didn't tell me why. They just said, "Ask Jesus." They just into they, your they heart. said, "You need to you need to invite Jesus Christ into your heart, or you're going to hell." And I was like, "Oh my god!" And so I I laid awake crying for like probably like an hour, just like Jesus, please come into my heart. I don't know. Yes, I'm sorry. You're like, I, I haven't felt him yet. Terrifying because oh I didn't know if I did it right. There was no confirmation. Oh my god. It wasn't like, oh, ding, Jesus is in your heart now. Right. <laughs> you know, I was just like. <laughs> you just see a strange, creepy man walk into your room at night. <laughs> it's me, goes, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. he, you asked me here. Quarter. I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Standing you know on what? the street, like flipping a quarter. That reminds me of a um, of a a story when I was like five years old. I had learned at school that day that uh, basically they taught us that they showed a picture of a white heart. And they said, this is what your heart looks like with no sin on it. It was like a paper, a paper heart, a paper heart. And they said, this is what your heart looks like with no sin on it. And then they pulled out a black paper heart and said, this is what a sinner's heart looks like. Your, your heart is covered in a black uh, substance that you cannot remove without inviting jesus into your heart mm, that's and weird my little was it a scientific drawing or like nah right like <laughs> really i'm pretty sure our heart's not even shaped like that you idiot but <laughs> Where are the like, where's the left ventricle dumbass <laughs> <laughs> no but so that night i when i was at home at dinner we were all having dinner at the table and my little brother had my mom said who ate the oreos and my little brother with his mouth covered in Oreos goes, not me. And it was like a really cute, like a, he was like three, I think. He was like, like oh, cute, ha, just being ha, cute. Yes. And all my siblings are like, ha 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 laughing. And I was like, you know, there's a black spot on your heart right now. That's not supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> now 
that's my thing that Christianity does sometimes. It just empowers you to say stupid <laughs> shit. Like my siblings, my siblings are all like, you know, my my older brother that's young, like at closest to me in age is 13 at this point. So all of them are in high school and they're all like, what the fuck are you fucking talking about, you weirdo? Psycho. And I remember like being up, like I, I think maybe I got out of bed when I was supposed to be in bed or something because there was nobody else. It was just my mom and I in the kitchen. And I was like, I meant that he was sinning. He was lying and he was sinning. And when you sin, you have a black spot on your heart that's not supposed to be there. I remember like explaining myself to my mom. Uh -huh, but now that I look back, I'm like, my little brother was just being a cute toddler being like, not me. And I was like, you fucking lying, sinning bitch. <laughs> 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 babies aren't bored without sin we're Isn't that something? i mean so let me go ahead and actually prep we're already like 10 minutes in let me go ahead and preface this <laughs> late preface um if you are a religious person this is not meant to be disrespectful to you in any way i don't have an issue with religion i don't have an issue with any of them my issue comes from people trying to shove it down others throats that's where i have a problem I do have an issue with with modern religion sometimes. I think that I don't have an I don't have an issue with uh beliefs like God and Jesus, Allah, whoever mm -hmm. you pray to. Um mm -hmm. I do have an issue sometimes with modern religious systems. I think they're Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But I like to keep religion and church like yeah. kind of separate. Yes, exactly, because Jesus said it doesn't matter where you are. You can worship anywhere. And any gathering of two or more is a, a not a church, but a, a, a sacred place or something like that. I don't remember what he said. So you can't just like love Jesus by yourself? No, you can. He said like any two or more, <laughs> two okay. or more is a, is a place, a place of worship, but you can have your own individual. Got it. So two people worshiping by it's default, that place is, it's the DMV? No, it's a church. <laughs> <laughs> got it got it oh. Oh, um well. but i think so i think my issue with religion is just the intense anxiety that it drove into me when i was yes. younger and i don't think that i deserve that as a kid i don't think anyone deserves to fear hell and like mm -hmm. when i lost my virginity i cried myself to sleep that night oh. because i thought i committed the ultimate sin like i was like why did you even do that like the fuck like i was like struggling with like my own like blossoming puberty and god i was like i'm going to hell yeah i'm going straight straight to hell <laughs> um that's but i was terrified i was literally terrified i really thought that i did something so 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 horrible and also on top of that like my parents were never honest with me or had conversations with me about like what they did when they were kids i have no idea when my mom lost her virginity she still won't tell me she still to this day won't tell me i'm mm. almost 30. she won't tell me i guess i haven't had those conversations with my parents either but it's like it's it's made it so weird and taboo to the point where i feel like a little slut like yeah. i was almost 16 at the time i was pretty young but i had been with my boyfriend for almost a year and it was just like i just felt so much pressure from yeah. society him everyone to do and that, especially you know? when you also when you're in a relationship even as a teenager when you're in a relationship for an extended period such as a year mm -hmm. i think you <clears throat> there is a little bit less like you feel a little bit more comfortable in doing something like that because you're not yes. just throwing it's it away on a stranger person, yeah. yeah which we know now does not matter fuck Doesn't whoever you want matter. yes your virginity is not sacred okay does not matter who you no. open your legs to first. All right. No. Does not matter. It doesn't. And it maybe okay. if we stop treating it as such, then we all wouldn't get so attached to the people that we, uh, I mean, I guess the guy I lost my virginity to, I wasn't attached to him for very long, but, um, and I took a couple but guys virginities like, in high school that were very attached to me, to be honest. A little slut. <laughs> but, but my, I think it's just like, it also reinforces this really weird, gross, pedophilic thing mm -hmm. of like, oh, she's a virgin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, that's disgusting. Fucking gross. why the fuck do you care about her hymen? Ugh, it's disgusting. <laughs> like, why do you fucking like that shit about Ti taking his daughter and to the doctor Make to see if sure. her hymen's still intact? 
I cannot imagine being that poor little girl, not only so in those situations. Weird. You don't but... need to know anything that's happening to my Puswacha dad. No. <laughs> okay, Puswacha. Ever. ever. Uh, um, well, you know, it's, oh, should we take a break? We're almost at, almost at 15. Is that what we normally almost do? 10, 15, 15, 10, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can take we a little break. I'm trying to get this lit. Okay. Uh, and yeah. we're back. Be back. Did you, you, are you got your torch working? No, no, no. I found a lighter. I lit a candle. I love that for you. And so now I have fire. Uh, um, Um, well, did you have to go to church as a kid? So I was going to say, I didn't grow up in a religious household. I grew up religious in the sense that I was always in private school. So I went to private preschool, private <laughs> kindergarten, private elementary, went to public for <laughs> private junior basically high. Means, private basically means Christian. <laughs> yes. And then when I went to um, high school, I went to a Catholic school. So for my for 10 of my 12, I guess 13 if you count, um, or is it 14 if you count preschool? I don't know. But I went to public school for two years of my entire primary education. Um, But my family, my parents were not religious, although they said they believed in God and whatever, but I didn't like, I wasn't like, what do you think drove them to those, those schools? Uh, I think the, the schools just weren't uh, up to their standard. um, So they weren't really, they weren't really like trying to send you there for religious reasons. They were just like, well, just kind of part of it. It was the, it was the quality of the education (laughs) and the, um, like my older siblings went to Upland high school and it was okay when they went no. well no they <laughs> okay. went but and it was okay but it started to get overcrowded like it okay. started like there was like so many kids there was like 3600 mm-hmm. kids at the school or something mm-hmm. and upland's like not that big of a city well like, yeah but you have a, like 30 40 kids per class like that's exactly class. whereas in my high school it was like 25 like okay. 25 to like 28 maybe and then there was smaller classes that maybe didn't have as many students, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it was the quality of the education for sure that my parents wanted me to have. So I didn't have to go. I never went to church. I still haven't been to church. You've never parents. been to church with my parents. Okay. Okay. Never in a situation with my parents ever. I had to go to church elementary school. I, we had chapel every uh, Thursday mm-hmm. and you know, it's funny. I hated it because I had to wear a skirt. That was required. You had to wear your chapel or your chapel. Um, so it's so jumper. fucking weird. Why? I liked the pants, the uniform pants. Well, yeah, no, women can't liked. wear pants. Yeah, that's sinful. Pants yeah. are a sin. Right. No, but then and then you go back far enough, and it's like you're showing your knees, bitch. Cover you your are. fucking knees up. What? Are you, yeah. Why don't you so. have a floor length gown? Yeah, exactly. You fucking stupid. But yeah, so I hated it. I hated, I was so insecure about my legs, which is so dumb, but um, I hated to have to wear the skirt. So we went every Thursday, we went to chapel. That was pretty much the extent of my church going. What happened Um, I do remember my aunt took me to church one time. I don't remember actually being there, but I remember because we walked there. Um, I have this crazy aunt who we can totally get all the way into that sometime but she took me to church (laughs) and gave me my first communion which i don't remember taking my first communion but i do remember her telling my parents oh she took her first communion so i still hadn't been to a catholic church ever about that or were they They were kind of like okay aunt judy that's not what we talked about yeah well (laughs) i don't pissed I'd be pissed my brother comes home with my kid and says, oh, he got his first communion. Like, the fuck he did? Take him back and give it back. Give the first communion back. (laughs) Give it back. That is not his. See, that's the thing. My parents weren't, like, they weren't, they didn't didn't make a big deal about that. Like, when I went to high school, all of my peers had, I had been baptized. So I was baptized in the church when I was a baby. I'm the only member of my family who hasn't been. That's good. It's a death sentence. Just kidding. Isn't that weird, though? It is weird. I agree. It is weird. (laughs) Anyways, continue. I agree. Um, But I didn't do, so it goes baptism, confirmation is when you're like confirmed into, well, first communion and then confirmation. And all of my peers had been confirmed into the Catholic church, but my parents never did that. I never, and I took my first communion, but it was like 
not a big deal. Other kids, like, they got their first communion in this perfect little dress and, like, had, like, a little flower crown. And it was, like, a big deal when they were, like, six or seven years old. That's so weird. It is so weird. So I never got that. And then in high school, we only had masks. Like, like, ritualistic, like. Yes. Well, and my last religion class that I had to take, we took a different religion class every semester of the entirety of high school. And my last one that I had to to take in my senior year was the sacraments. So we had to learn about the seven sacraments, which is like baptism, communion, confirmation, um, marriage. I don't know the rest. You can't be a gay. Tell you what. Gay is in Tell you what. No. (laughs) But it's cool because I feel like, and I think we've talked about this before, maybe the, the difference between Catholics and Christians. And I also feel like there's a difference in how they're perceived because I think people think of Catholics as like super strict and like, because Catholic mass is boring as fuck. Mm-hmm. It is the they worst have, experience like, do they have ever. Sunday school? Uh, yes, but okay. it's like, so in like, it, so it would be a similar situation, I think. in in I think, I don't know, I guess. I don't know. I think so, though, because it just makes sense. Like, kids are a distraction in mass, yeah. and it is very, like... But I used to Christian church, like, when I went to Christian church with friends, I was like, what? This is freaking fun. You sick. guys sing songs, and you guys... Yeah, play, like, there's, like, the guy playing guitar. Like, what are you guys doing today? I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like a rock concert. <laughs> it's like, you feel Jesus in the room right now. Hey, man. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Whereas like the Catholic God. priest is like, um, <laughs> and everyone's just dead silent. Yes. The Lord is with you and also and with, with you. your spirit. <laughs> anyway. Um, Dude, so yeah. like, Christian church, I went to it all the time. I had to go to Sunday school all the fucking time. I went all the fucking time. Like half of my friends were like Sunday school friends, but I only got to see them once a week and we never mm. talked any other time besides that. <laughs> um but i when i was younger i liked sunday school a lot more i think it's because i was living in a community where i had been consistently going to that church so i like i knew the people mm-hmm. but once i moved to california like our church going became like super sporadic and we like were like trying to find the right church and there's so many mega churches out here yeah. i lived right down the street from like saddleback which is oh, one of the biggest churches yeah. in i'm telling you that was like a rock in concert. the country you yeah. like it was like a rock concert every time you went there like they had like four or five different pastors they'd like all be on stage they had the fucking the the, the mouthpiece oh like, yeah Britney spears like it, there was a a band it was like a show it was like a show i almost okay, wait. Liked... i just need to i just need to mention really quick have you seen that show on hbo that's uh the family oh my fucking god you need to watch it what's it called um it's called it's a it's the name of the family oh my god and it's the freaking curly headed guy oh my god hbo hbo church family you need to fucking watch it i'm gonna find it but you can continue so every time okay. you went to the uh so that so this place was like a rock star like the rock star shit so sometimes i would just like sit in the services with my parents because like i don't know any of those fucking kids yeah Fuck you um And then other times, like, my brother and I would be forced to go to Sunday school. And so I So you didn't enjoy it because you just didn't know the kids in it? Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't know anyone. It was just, like, me and my brother, and we were just like, Mm -hmm. fuck this. Yeah. (laughs) It's, like, such a huge church. Like, so huge. Um, And then sometimes he and I would get separated because they'd break it down by grade. They'd be like, Mm -hmm. all right, everyone this age. And I'm like, no. And we were only a year apart, so usually we got to, like, skate by, but that church, no, was too big. Um, I started doing this thing on Sunday mornings where I wake up at 6 a.m. consistently from childhood today as an adult. Still does. Right. And this is when I wake up. And um, I started pretending like I was sleeping in until, like, 9. Oh. 9.30. I would just fake sleep just so I could avoid going to fucking Sunday school. So your parents would let you stay home sometimes? No. No, they'd come wake me up. Yeah. If they decide they wanted to go to church that day. But like that's what Oh, because you said was. it was sport or sporadic. It was sporadic. I literally would just I would just force myself to stay in bed super late just in case they wanted to go to church on yeah. Sunday. It was the worst. Sunday sucked and that was like my one day off in the week. Like what the you're going to make me go to school on a Sunday? 
Sunday school. Right, especially when it's not even fun anymore because you don't have your friends there. And <laughs> sometimes those fucking Sunday school. Okay, let me tell you, Adam's Adam has a friend who was a mass drug dealer. He literally sells every type of drug there is, like sells right. drugs. Huh. That's his job. That was Adam's Sunday school teacher when he was young, <laughs> like sixth grade, I want to say. And now, now that guy literally sell. He literally is like a drug. He doesn't he sell mass amounts of drugs. He sells, he sells every type of drug. Well, God, I guess I hope I don't know about heroin and meth, but the fun stuff. All the shrooms and acid you need, and, it, and yes, all that stuff. Anyway, oh but my yeah, goodness. it sucks. It sucks when because Sunday school can be one of those things that's like super fun for people. I was jealous that my friends had Sunday school because I always thought of church as just like boring yeah. and lame yeah. and so when i went with like a friend i was like oh my god this is actually really cool but if you don't if it's not a comforting space for you um, i don't know what like clicked in my head but i was like fuck this place fuck this church mm -hmm. fuck this place i hate it here take me the fuck home i don't know anyone here um and like i wasn't learning about god or jesus they were like playing games and shit that were like around loosely related I don't know. It wasn't, I don't, I don't know. Or maybe we were, and I just like blocked it out. <laughs> they probably, probably at the not. end, like wrapped it in to. It's all stupid. It's all dumb. I remember one time I was <laughs> in a Sunday school class and, and this, the, the guy was like, so what is the golden rule? And like asked the class, like, what's the golden rule? Treat your like, neighbor. It's yeah. Treat others how you want to be treated. Yeah. But this kid in the class was like, don't pee in the pool. LOL golden rule. He has a yes, funny dad. Like he. he has a funny no, dad. I remember for sure. Yes. <laughs> I know. I wonder who I wonder where that kid's at now. I mean, he literally heard that from somebody. Um, this show on HBO is called The Righteous Gemstones. I need you to watch it. I need you to okay. watch it. It's Danny McBride is the main oh, okay. character. And it's about a family of like televangelists, like super <laughs> hypocritical Christians who are mm -hmm. Freaking Joel as most Osteen. are as most are sometimes right. people will come into my chat like on twitch because i tag it lgbtq mm. and people will come in and be like gay is a sin gay <laughs> is a sin and i'm like i hope you haven't had any shellfish recently because that's oh, a it's sin, a sin. Too. <laughs> eating oh. shrimp is a fucking sin wait who said that who who said eating shrimp is a sin? Or oh, did you just make that up? Eating shellfish is a sin. No, it's real. It's in the Bible. Because they're like shit. They're like a girl. Like, I don't fucking know what the fuck reason why. Why can't you have I've gay sex? There's no okay. reason behind it. So this is literally like a great example of the difference between because I I mean I I never learned that. But there well, that's are not like a, that's not like a prominent rule that people right. Know but about. you it's like, I, you it's like, you it's heard like it and you retained it. Yeah, but it's like if you're going to say that one of the biggest things that people try to take from the Bible is that you can't have gay sex, I'm going to take something small yeah. and I'm going to blow it up just as big right, as Right, because you they say that gay <laughs> sex isn't even mentioned in the Bible no, a single time. Not once. Like, how can you, you just made it up. But that's, okay, that's actually what I was going to say a few minutes ago is the Pope, the Catholic Pope that we have now has came out and been like. He's like, gay is gay. Gay is gay. Gay is gay. gay, is gay. <laughs> like, who fucking cares? He also said that you can believe in evolution and God at the same time. He's trying to appeal to the masses. He's like, I gotta get the young ones. I'm hoping that he just has some fucking common sense because you cannot discount an entire industry of people, aka scientists, like people yeah. do in this country. And that's, They're like, you know what else? One of the biggest issues I have with hmm. like mod like just like taking the bible for its word yeah it was translated by men mm -hmm. okay and they've gone through the first sentence is translated wrong the first What's... sentence of the bible is in the beginning yeah all right what was it supposed to be in a beginning which is a huge Yes! Difference. Two completely different things. I've never heard that before. Yes. Oh my God. Wow. Yes. Oh so my that, God. That, like 85% of the Bible is just mistranslated and it was translated by men whom we don't fucking trust. Okay. No. Men have all your motives. Yeah. I bet, 
I, I'm about to say something really slanderous. I was like, I bet Jesus was a fucking drug dealer and he wrote this shit. He just got a copy well, of the Bible and said, no, Jesus was a great fucking guy. <laughs> he died for everyone. He was fucking sick as fuck. Oh my God, that's so And then so he sent funny. it off. <laughs> we don't no, know. Jesus was a great man. <laughs> they had oh this whole God. piece where like Jesus, the bastard, and he like tore those pages out and he said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Jesus was dope as Immaculate fuck. Conception. He was <laughs> implanted by an angel named Gabriel. He's like, I'm gonna come up with something good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so fucking funny. Oh, and with that, we'll take a little break. <laughs> we'll be right <laughs> back. back to close it out with you. Oh. Hello, hello, hello. We're back. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> So another thing I have a problem with the Bible is like, I know it was translated by men because it's so fucking misogynistic. There's no way God was like, if you have women parts, you are less than. Yeah. He didn't say that. They didn't. He did not she. say that. First, right. Her. I was going to say he doesn't exist. <laughs> they is really God how is we a should. Woman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving them gender. <laughs> God has no fucking gender whatsoever. Yeah, God they, is a being. They if didn't make exists. me less than you because I don't have your biology. Because okay. I don't have a... F- yes, exactly. So... And I completely agree. It just makes... There's so many discrepancies. Just the whole premise. Like, the whole premise of Eve was made from the ribs of Adam. Did you know that the Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell's uh, defense attorneys uh, brought that up in court and said that this trope is as old as time women have been blamed for the sins of man since the book of genesis well he's I'm like, back oh. there. he's right however this woman is a predator <laughs> however okay. you are a fucking rapist child molester piece of shit like Don't disgusting ever. predator like ew ew ew, <laughs> yes. ew ew but you're you're not wrong women have been blamed for the sins of man forever forever but they girl, said, oh and they said eve ate the apple she's been here for like five seconds <laughs> she ate the apple <laughs> it's okay <laughs> men were doing adam this told her not to yeah they were like did. don't do it and so and so god was like guess what you have to birth and now it's gonna hurt for everyone you did and that you have to, right you, you have to you fucked women month. as a as a fucking gender as a right i don't buy it Mm-mm. well some- and that's another thing too about the difference between catholicism and like and christianity is that or i guess i should say protestant christianity is like catholicism says like the the entire book of genesis is a fucking lie the so why do you get to pick and choose that well they said that these creation stories were cre they're they're created nobody stories. was there like, okay go well on. yeah they're like these were created for children to to understand because like that's i mean it's just like it's pretty fucking it was like originally there just to be it. like hey um don't kill each other and don't rape babies. Here's the Bible. Here's the rules. Well, that's no, that's like- the Ten Commandments. That's Exodus. Oh, but what that's I'm saying Moses. is, like, it was basically just like a, a series of stories. So you'd be like, "Don't do this." Here's why. Right. Well, the creation stories are like on and on the third and on the third day, God created the <laughs> Remington bull action rifle <laughs> so that man could fight the dinosaurs <laughs> and the homosexuals. <laughs> Um, no, but those, those stories like Adam and Eve and freaking the creation story, like those, they say Catholicism says that those were literally created for children to help children understand because they have those big giant questions that really can't be answered, but that's also, (laughs) but they can though. And they did. It's called evolution. (laughs) Right. Exactly. It's called the big bang bitch. All right. Uh, Um, but <coughs> oh my goodness that's Ooh, did you hear about joel olstein how they found six hundred thousand dollars in his wall in the bathroom suspect that guy's like one of the worst people on the planet Is wait did like... i tell you how okay he was on my he was on 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 a sunday he plays on one of the news channels that i watch and he literally i was listening to him for no more than 90 seconds and in that 90 seconds he was like a friend of mine was really struggling with his business hadn't made any money and I told him, you pray to God, you pray to God. <laughs> and, 
and, and guess he, what? Now he's a millionaire. Now he's <laughs> rolling in it. Like, fuck you, Joel Osteen. Suck my ass, fuck you up, fucking Joel. piece of shit. Like, you're gonna make everybody who's praying feel like they ain't praying hard enough. I'm not accepting Jesus hard enough into my heart because I haven't felt that confirmation yet. That is, religion can be so dangerous and, and just detrimental yes. to a young brain. I'm like, yes. if you want to become an adult and read the Bible and decide, like, this is for me, mm -hmm. I fucking love I, Jesus. Yes, yeah. Yes, like, go for it. But mm -hmm. I think children should have some opportunity to, like, learn for themselves and not necessarily, I like, because it's made me resent religion at this point like my relationship with religion as a child put so much insecurity and bad energy and bad memories and just like yep. i felt like a bad person because of the the way that i was that i was attracted to women that you know like i have a friend who she's gay i don't want to say her name i'm pretty sure you know who it is though um but the day that she she hooked up with a woman for the first time she thought the world was literally going to end she literally thought the world was going to end because she had sex with a woman. And it's just like, that is, it can be such a dangerous. Why are we programming thing. that into people? Because on, but on the same note, you've seen, I've seen some people in some dark places turn their life around because of, because of religion. And it's, mm -hmm. it can, it can do really, really magical, beautiful things. And I've seen it happen. Well, that's um, up to the human being. But yeah. But that was the person who decided like, oh, I want to follow this path of Christ. Yes, they decided yeah. that it was never like somebody was forced into being a Christian. He said, I'm happy now. Yeah. No. And to be honest, I kind of see that <laughs> because I do agree with you that religion can turn people all the way, 180, all the way the fuck around. But sometimes I feel like that might be the human brain finding something new to be addicted to mm -hmm, versus oh, especially they... like addicts and things like that. Exactly. Or that. people who, you know, were in an abusive situation mm -hmm. or like they finding something to like to put your trust, trust in like hope that. like it's a really fantastic source of hope yes for sure well and that's what also people say is like this shit was created to be able to control people because it gives people like hope this like yeah oh, the this sense of a higher happen. power there's a exactly. reason for this yes right blah, there's blah, a blah. reason right when i'm like um sorry but if my fucking mom died when she was not supposed to fucking die i don't believe in your stupid fucking, fucking shit god was not looking after i pray my mother. for your mom too so yeah, i'm, I'm sure, sure there was plenty of prayer like, for her the by her fuck like no god doesn't no that's not how it works it's not like a fucking Ma slot machine you put in your prayer like no and that's what i'm just like you can't like but that's just another one of those things that they do to you know bring some sense to this ridiculous fucking world that we live in that just yeah. makes no sense and it's not yeah. fair true at all but fucking a dude yeah that shit is just i could go on about this shit for like literally no. days. no like, i can't believe how fast we got through that episode I mean, like, like i because i didn't even realize i have like literally dead ass like 17 16 years of forced christianity on my body yeah. <laughs> like I never chose to do that. And that's cr also crazy that I'm the only member of my family that's not baptized. I've always felt like the black sheep, like they like don't like me as much. And it's confirmed now. <laughs> they said, we're sending her to hell. She's whatever. <laughs> the, the other two, <laughs> mind you, Rachel's born 10 years later. Okay. My brother right. was born a year older than me. <laughs> what what year, just get what age was he baptized? One? I don't know. He was young. I, don't, I think I was born at that point. I don't remember though. Maybe not. But also, I was born in Kuwait, so that probably had something to do with my baptism. Yeah. Whatever. I'm holding it over their heads. I don't want it anymore, but I feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I do think that's weird, though, that they it? did it, and then they were like, nah. And then they were like, yeah. Yeah. Went Ten back. years later, <laughs> period. <laughs> because, like, strange. my dad doesn't even believe in heaven anymore. And he was a really? missionary. Like the guy used to do work for the fucking church. He doesn't believe in hell then either, does he? No, 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 no. Okay. No. I he thinks say, that when you die, he, just, he just thinks it's lights out. He thinks there is a connectedness between humans. And he thinks that connectedness is love, but he doesn't really. Believe know. in an afterlife? Mm -mm. 
Yeah. And That's I was how like, my I siblings, know. my, I think I, I just, it makes no sense for me to, to think that we don't have any. Maybe after. we just kind of like rejoin the energy. Our energy is rejoined in energy and you just live life as energy. Who knows? I don't fucking yeah. know. Damn. Yeah. Look up, but like, yeah, next week, the meaning of life. What is it? Yeah. I don't fucking right. know, bro. Cause I can't find it. Oh, and I'm the like, meaning of life. Like I've been struggling with it recently. I've been like having like anxiety attacks about it. I'm like, just blackness, just a nap forever. Yeah, a nap <laughs> forever. <laughs> forever nap. It is crazy to think about. Because yeah. I also like what people are like. Oh, I heard this person or I saw this person. Sometimes when my mom comes to me in my dreams, I'm like, oh my god, she's definitely still here. But then I'm like, that's my subconscious. That's my subconscious yeah. being like, this is a wonderful memory of this person that you have. Mm-hmm. And here's a little, a little, here's a little gift spritz of that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but I mean, God, I just, there has to be, there has to be something. There's gotta be. But, <laughs> but my religion teacher, that my sacraments religious or religion teacher said that she doesn't believe in hell. She does not believe that hell exists. In yeah. General. That's, that's a Jewish thing too. The uh, Jewish people don't believe that hell is real. Yeah. Which Uh I'm on board with that. I think we're there, though. I think we're living on hell. Yeah, right. Hell does exist. (laughs) It's right here on Earth. That's the big punchline is when you die, you don't. You just wake up. (laughs) You stay in this fucking hell. You're still in hell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Well, well, well. In hell, hell, hell. <laughs> Bird in hell. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> That's Cardi B. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you the best. In nah. hell. <laughs> uh, we want to take a rip together before I would we love uh, to take a rip with you. If you're listening right now, if you're not driving or any doing any activities, or if you don't have a baby in your arm or anything. That's what I was really about to say. Like no babies in arms. No yeah. babies in Okay. No <laughs> babies in laps while driving taking bong rips. Yeah, I imagine. The trifecta. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. There's some lipstick on my neck. You leave a trail of lipstick everywhere you go. I know. It's everywhere. Oh, well. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. That was, like, so fun. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I'll do my research for next week, so we'll talk about asylums. Insane yeah. asylums. Why do people go there? Fuck, dude. I did I did some research this morning and took some notes, and it there's some fucked up information out there, so hell yeah there is brother good luck to you listening next week because it's gonna be fucking intense all right love Um, you guys we will see you next week make your choices yeah (laughs) love you we're so cute